Previously on Me, 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 and Andy G. Well, that's a swell trick, but how do I get it on my calculator? Whoa, let's take it down a notch, Dr. Brainiac. That's too much for me. Me, 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 yeah, and DG! DG. Have an adventure! One, two, three! Andy? Please, me, bro. Why, there's a little ripe scallion. Put that knife away, it's me, your old pal. Yo, Dr. B! What up, dog? Andy, where have you been these past several months? That AP test's been bugging me out, bro. Why, my poor boy, the test is tomorrow. But don't worry. I'll get you up to speed and simultaneously save you from your ne'er-do-well ways. Here we are. What would you like to learn today? There's so much I still got to be knowing. I ain't ready for that test. I know how to take derivatives, but what if I want to flip that shit up? Well, Andy, we call that the antiderivative. Antiderivative? Sounds evil. No, oh, Andy, calm your jittery nerves. It's actually quite helpful. An antiderivative is a function that undoes the derivative. That sounds fantastic! But what does it mean? With the antiderivative of an acceleration function, you can find velocity. With the antiderivative of a velocity function, you can find displacement. Cool your jets, Dr. B. Let's throw it in reverse and back it up a notch. Of course. I know you've been out of it for a while, so I'll go easy on you for a bit. Thanks, Doc. That really means a lot to me. All right. As the name implies, an antiderivative is basically the opposite of a derivative. You can look for a few patterns to help you recognize where to find an antiderivative. Remember how to find the derivative of a power function? Well, instead of subtracting one from the exponent, add one to it when you find the antiderivative. You'll have to divide the number out front by the exponent, because you have to multiply that value by the exponent when you derive. Just make sure it works, or you'll ruin the whole thing. Be sure to look for a function times its derivative, which is another useful antiderivative pattern. In these cases, you must undo the chain rule if you want to find the antiderivative. Another hot tip is to look for a derivative divided by the function, whose antiderivative will be the natural log of the absolute value of that function. Keep your eyes peeled for trig functions, too. Go ahead and write these on your hand or something, since no human being could possibly remember all these little bitches. Hey, it's really starting to click. Is there anything else I need to know? Hold on to your chair, because we're just getting started. Whatever you do, don't forget to add the constant when you get the antiderivative. This value, written as plus c, is extremely important since it shifts the entire graph. The constant will turn into nothing when you take its derivative. In other words, there are no traces of the constant in the original function, but it is there. Is there any proof? No. It's kind of like Santa Claus or Hillary Clinton supporters. There's no proof of their existence, but trust me, they're there. Another way of looking at antiderivatives is seeing them as indefinite integrals. On a graph, it's the area between the line and the x-axis. That is the greatest thing in the history of time. I know, right? But just one more thing. Out of all the infinite number of functions, very, very few actually have an antiderivative. But how will we know which ones do have them? You'll figure something out. All right, 
right, this is it, the big day. The next four hours will determine whether you'll get college credit or whether you wasted $83 in an entire year getting ready for this test. I hope it's the first one. So do I. Shut up, you. Andy, are you ready? I'm a little nervous, but thanks to our valuable study time, I know I'll ace it. That's the spirit. Oh, it's time to start. Oh, here goes nothing. Oh, Andy. <laughs>